Tomo News presents Living on Mars. China's Concept Martian Forest City. Matt Damon sure could have used one of these concept Mars homes in 2015's The Martian. The concept from the Chinese Space Agency, Tongji University, and Stefano Boeri Architects would see a spaceship ferry a colony of massive pods containing forest cities from Earth toward Mars. Once the pods have touched down on the red planet, in Habitat reports they would use ecosystemic seeds to take root. This colony of forest city giant pods, dubbed New Shanghai, would also reportedly contain an infrastructure and an Earth-like atmosphere. Would you like to live in New Shanghai? Scientists may have discovered water at Mars' equator. If you're looking for another reason to move to Mars, here you go. After re-examining old satellite data from 2002 to 2009 by Mars Odyssey's neutron spectrometer, scientists may have discovered ice around Mars' equator. The neutron spectrometer can't directly detect water, but by measuring neutrons, it can detect hydrogen signature, which could mark the presence of water or other hydrogen-bearing substances. Researchers discovered an unexpected amount of hydrogen around the equator by reducing the blurred or noise in Odyssey's data using image reconstruction techniques used for other spacecraft and for medicine. This improved the spatial resolution of the images to 180 miles from the previous resolution of 320 miles. Having water on Mars could mean that future human missions wouldn't need to bring water with them for drinking, cooling equipment, or watering plants, thus reducing the number of resources needed for transport. Scientists say more research needs to be done and more evidence collected to determine if the signature is actually from water ice. Mission complete. A team of scientists have finally returned to civilization after completing a NASA-funded isolation experiment to simulate life on Mars. The six-person High Seas Mission 5 crew lived in a dome on the Mars-like landscape of Hawaii's Mauna Loa volcano for eight months. The dome was equipped with a kitchen, bathroom, common area, and six individual bedrooms. Though not confined to the inside, the crew were required to don spacesuits whenever they went outside. While in the habitat, the crew conducted scientific research, equipment testing, and resource tracking. They also had to learn to prepare food using dehydrated and shelf-stable ingredients. Communication with the outside were subject to a delay of 20 minutes, the same amount of time it takes for signals to reach Mars from Earth. To better understand the psychological impacts of a long-term space mission, they were fitted with sensors that gauged their moods and monitored interactions with other members. The mission is the fifth in a series of six studies designed to help NASA select crews that can do well on an expedition to the Red Planet. The sixth and final High Seas mission will also last for eight months and is slated to begin in January of 2018. Life on Mars? Mars may not have been an arid wasteland after all, at least according to a new study that suggests the Red Planet may have been far more habitable than previously thought. Martian meteorites contain a specific mineral that has long led scientists to believe the planet had an ancient, dry environment. The mineral, called merylite, contains no water or hydrogen, which led to the assumption that its origins were likewise devoid of liquid. But new research now suggests that merylite was originally a hydrogen-containing mineral and that Mars may have had a more water-rich history. When an asteroid or comet collides with the planet, the force of the collision propels Martian rocks containing Whitlocket out into space. Researchers theorized when these rocks enter Earth's atmosphere as meteors, the shock, pressure, and high temperature sustained during impact dehydrate the mineral, turning it into merylite. They tested the theory by blasting synthetic Whitlocket with a gas-powered gun at speeds of more than 1,600 miles per hour and with huge amounts of pressure. The shock experiments were sustained for only a fraction of a second, but already resulted in partial conversion, with 36% of the mineral transformed to merylite. The findings suggest Mars could have had a more abundant water supply. It also hints at the possibility of life on the Red Planet, as Whitlocket is water-soluble and contains phosphorus, which is an essential element for life. More detailed studies of Martian meteorites may provide more insight, but a Martian rock taken and transported to Earth will likely be needed for confirmation. 
For now, scientists need to make do with thermal imaging and rock sample analysis from the rovers. TV show gives a glimpse of life on Mars. The first home designed for humans to live in on Mars will be unveiled at an exhibition in the UK on November 10th. The exhibition of the show home ties in with a National Geographic docudrama that imagines colonists from Earth living on the red planet. The house would be constructed with Martian soil. The soil would be microwaved until it forms a brick. The bricks would be used to build the walls of an igloo-shaped dome, which would be around 10 feet thick. Recycled spacecraft parts, including a double airlocked entrance, would be used as the front door. Experts believe the dome would be able to withstand the Martian environment, including extremely low temperatures, micro-meteorite impacts, a thin atmosphere, and cosmic radiation. An underground area would contain facilities such as a dining hall and laboratory. The colony would expand module by module until it forms a city, termed Olympus Town. The exhibition at the Royal Observatory Greenwich in London coincides with the launch of the six-part docudrama Mars, which tells the story of an attempt to colonize Mars in the year 2033. Martian atmosphere could be used to make oxygen and rocket fuel. Mars may one day be able to sustain a human outpost with the help from the planet's own environment. 96% of the Martian atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide, Researchers believe this abundant resource, combined with the cold Martian temperature and non-thermal plasma, can produce oxygen and carbon monoxide. Local production of these gases on Mars could, in theory, help sustain an outpost or even colony on the red planet with oxygen and help with the deeper exploration of the solar system using carbon monoxide as fuel. But that being said, it's all speculation for the moment, so it looks like we won't be joining Matt Damon anytime soon. There's ice on Mars. Sheets of ice exist close to the Martian surface. New research published in the journal Science looked at data from spacecraft on eight locations on Mars and found large swaths of ice. The sheets are said to be located near the surface as well as close to depths of 100 meters. Researchers also found cliffs made up of water ice. According to Science, the ice sheets could be useful for future missions to Mars. In other words, water might just be within our reach on Mars. How cool is that? Even in space, you have to eat your greens. NASA hopes its astronauts will be able to keep up their veggie intake on future missions to the moon or Mars, thanks to a greenhouse project it's working on with the University of Arizona. The prototype lunar greenhouse is cylindrical, measuring 18 feet in length and more than 8 feet in diameter. The garden uses a hydroponic system in which water enriched with nutrient salts flows continuously through the roots of the plants. Carbon dioxide exhaled by astronauts can be absorbed by the plants. In return, the plants produce oxygen for the astronauts through photosynthesis. The exchange forms a bioregenerative life support system. NASA's Veggie Plant Growth System was the first fresh food growth experiment on the International Space Station. The space agency hopes to provide a more sustainable approach to long-term exploration on the moon, Mars, and beyond. Power up. NASA is testing a nuclear fission reactor prototype that could enable long-term stays on the surface of the red planet. The first humans on Mars will need to be able to generate power to transform the planet's water and carbon dioxide into liquid oxygen and fuel. Addressing this concern is the Kilo Power Project, a nuclear power system that comes with a uranium reactor core, which uses fission to generate electricity. The system can generate 1 kilowatt of electricity, which can power a toaster to 10 kilowatts, which can light up to 100 light bulbs. 4 to 5 10 kilowatt units will be needed to power the habitat charging vehicles, generate safe drinking water, and oxygen. The months-long testing for the kilopower prototype began in November at the Department of Energy National Security site in Nevada. Though a flight test is at least six to eight years away, if all goes well, the technology could be ready by the mid-2020s to early 2030s. Life on Mars? Maybe not. 
New research from the U.S. Geological Survey has found that the mysterious streaks once thought to be proof of water on Mars are probably just sand flows. Sorry, NASA. Recurring slope lineae, or RSL, or long, dark streaks that expand on the slopes of Mars during warmer seasons and retract when the temperature gets colder. RSL looked similar to features on Earth formed by water flows and contained hydrated salts that help water stay liquid. But a closer look reveals behavior that's unlike flowing water. Streaks existed only on the tops of steep slopes and all settled at an angle of repose, the maximum slope at which loose solid material can be piled without slumping. Researchers concluded that the markings weren't created by water, but by dry grains like sand and dust that accumulate and flow down the slopes. The RSL may still contain water, but probably not enough to sustain tiny microbial critters, let alone human life.